morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead preview. From your friends at Privateer FX, we, uh, <coughs> colleagues over in Europe had quite the weekend. The Yankees, Red Sox, don't really have any skin in the game there, neither of those teams, but, uh, sounded like a good time. A lot of, uh, a lot of runs at the Olympic Stadium, where West Ham plays. So I'm sure that was pretty exciting for the, uh, for the Brits. I'm trying to, uh, let me resize my screen a little bit here. Hold on. Um, we're coming off the G20 weekend where everything came out. Everything, you know, all the notable news really came out um, yesterday. And I was waiting. I, I tweeted earlier I was waiting for the uh, equity market to open uh, in the U.S. And... Um, let me just add, let me add S&P future here. The S&Ps, the NASDAQ, and uh, our, the equity indices in the U.S. are opening. Uh, let's see where they are. Nice gap open here. So we closed on Friday down at 29.53 and we gapped open. And we're you know pressing highs here. These these quotes are delayed. But my Bloomberg's got it at right around 29.75, 29.76. So um, you know a bit of a risk on tone. One of the articles I was reading out of the um, the Hu Jin guy. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. He said the Chinese blog, uh, Chinese. Twitter guy that a lot of people are following, including our friend uh, Greg McKenna. This is a breakthrough. The Chinese side said in the brief, the two sides agreed to restart trade con consultations based on quality and mutual respect. This is important to the Chinese side. Hope the U.S. side can keep this commitment. That's a big hope. And what we like to say here at Privateer FX is hope in one hand and shit in the other. Um, we're fading this initial... Uh, risk rally, you know, now that now that equities are open, um, you know, new all-time highs in the equity space, blah, blah, blah. Um, we pretty much, I, from what I was tweeting earlier, I, I would say that the, aside from the Hawaii, you know, potentially taking a little, pro, a little bit of the pressure off Hawaii and letting them, um, letting U.S., um, companies trade with them again, uh, I would say was pretty much in line with what the market was expecting. Um, you know, so you might see, you're going to see some risk on probably today, maybe early part of the week. It was interesting, I read something on Market Ear where um, despite the constructive November G20 uh, in the U.S.-China trade outcome, the risky FX pairs traded traded pretty well for kind of the first day and then declined rather sharply. Um, and I think you remember the sell-off in risk in, uh, in December. So I think that it's, you know, after seeing what's happened the past, you know, the month of June, we're in a new quarter, the second half of the year starts today. Um, you know, there's been a bit of a risk on rally um, you know, over the past month, you know, one of the best months that the equity markets had, the equities and bonds all rallied. So we, you know, I think it, I think it's kind of in line with, uh, with market expectations. Um, a lot of the analysts are calling this a fragile U.S. China tru China truce. Um, now it's all about U.S. data, the Fed. Obviously, we have not for our payrolls this week. We also have a the Independence Day, Fourth of July, where you know most of the people that I know in the market are pretty much taking this entire week off. Um, I do think the jobs number could be market moving on Friday, but there'll be zero liquidity. Um, I'm not really sure why they're even bothering. There was something I read over the weekend that Trump was talking about giving uh, government employees Friday off, 
which would then mean there'd be no uh, no non-farm and they would push it forward a week. But uh, S&P futures now trading at 29.74, up 1% on the day. NASDAQ futures up 1.6%. USD not futures down 13 full ticks at 127.18. There you go. I don't know if you guys could hear that. That was my Bloomberg uh, squawk going off there. 29.74 in the S&Ps. Uh, well, let's take a look at last week and you know see what exactly happened. Then we'll get, we'll get into the charts. But um, the euro was pretty much unchanged last week. Uh, why don't we take a look at? Let's get out of this uh, this macro and get into the currencies. You know, stuff that we're kind of kind of good at. Uh, you can see a uh, full-on doji week in the euro. Indecisive potential for this to to trade lower before higher. Uh, dollar yen was up about a half a percent on the week. Um, you can see that we did make that new low down to 106.70, 80, 106.80, and that had a pretty pretty decent reversal week. Uh, the British pound. Good luck trading that. Um, had a little bit of a re reversal lower, got up close to 128, had some offers in like right just below the figure, missed that, and that was down 0.3%, dollar Swissy didn't do anything like the euro unchanged, um, Aussie and uh, Aussie and Kiwi did well, obviously anticipating, you know, uh, this is a combination of just positioning, you know, really well short in the Antipodeans, um, See, we had that reversal week we talked about uh, last last week, and then real strong close on the highs. Um, you know, for me, what was I looking at? I was using the December high because I think this is probably the right. I think this is a swing that the market is following right now. Um, ignoring that uh, flash crash. Whoa. And we're bumping up. We're getting close. 7048 is the third fib. If you include flash crash low, we're above 6995. And then you're talking 70, 70 ish. Um, we have some offers up there. Looking to fade this. Dollar CAD had a, uh, they had some okay data and uh, pretty powerful. Like this was a sneaky one that kind of got away from all of us. You know, we broke a trend line. Uh, again, this is a weekly because we're, we're talking first day of the week, so we like to look at the previous week's bars. Big weekly break on this bar. Then reversed higher, right back down. And then, you know, last week we, we actually closed under the 200-week moving average. Um, and the lowest we've been... I think it made a new low for the, yeah, it did. It made a new low for 2019, just marginally. I took out the old low, the January low, by 10 pips or so. Um, so dollar cab was down about a percent last week. The Kiwi dollar, um, you know, like the Aussie, like its neighbor, uh, had a nice little, nice little uh, up week. Market's pretty short that. Um, Let's t this fib actually m would make a lot more sense if we go back to that early December before the big risk sell-off in uh, equities, um, and that kind of avoided some of that flash crash in January. You can see that we're getting really close to the 50% fibo at 67.26. So we are um, actually I'm going to sell this here, and you know we'll leave stops over here over this two thirds and these old weekly highs up in, uh, we have a stop up around 85. So I had a good week. That was the strongest, I think, yeah, the strongest major, up 2% last week. Uh, gold was up a bit, S&P was up about 2%, and uh, crude oil was up just under 2%. So um, why don't we go to, uh, we'll go to a couple other currencies. Let's see what Aussie ends looking like here on the open. I'm going to go back to the daily now just so we can see we want to we want to watch all these gaps. So everything is gapped, you know, on uh, risk on manner, on the open, and I do think that all these gaps will be filled in short order. Um, you know, potentially even by the London Open. I think I tweeted that. 
So, you know, there's your gap in Aussie yen. Um, there's dollar yen gap from 107.90 opened at uh, 118. So it's not, nothing that special. I mean, here, here's Aussie. Um, I'm sitting short some Aussie right around the 70, 15, 70, 20 level. Um, you know, that's that's not much of a gap to, <laughs> gap to fill at all. Uh, that barely reacted. Uh, Dollar China, I think, has had a bit of a move. Um, where we closed Dollar China on Friday? We closed at 687, we'll call it. Extending gains, not trading at and we opened. Yen is down 0.5%. U.S. Fino futures down uh, at 13.5. Oh, sorry, we closed at, at 127.17. Close. Close at 686.80. At you know, that's a decent little move right there. You know, for do dollar China, it's uh, three big for a move. That's a big move. Um, dollar Sing is going to look a bit like that as well. Although it doesn't even look like this is. Is this even populating? Where the heck is it? It's July 1st right there, yeah. All right, so it just, you know, kind of opened and went went straight down. Um, let's look at, like, some of the end crosses because there's Kiwi end. You know, nice gap up. I, I do think all these are going to – these gaps will be closed in the next, you know, few hours potentially in the uh, – maybe it takes as long as uh, the New York Open, but I could see this happening even sooner. We did have some pretty – crap data the nbs pmi out of china uh economy is still struggling the services print was 54.2 uh the manufacturing though is still under 50 uh came in at 49.4 it's only been two months since november um that the manufacturing pmis out of china had been above 50 and you know china needs a deal because they're uh, manufacturing economy is still struggling. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of tweets out of Trump um, in the next couple of days. And I, I think it will be a bit of a headline um, ping pong game um, early part of this week. Then, like I said, we've got the um, we got the 4th of July, Independence Day on uh, Thursday in the U.S., Friday, there'll probably be a one-hour trade, if you're lucky. Um, let's take a look at 10-year yields, and that's not going to update. Let's see if this thing works. No, it's not working either. Um, we are seeing some, a bit of a sell-off here in 10-year uh, in yields which makes sense with the movement that we've seen in the S&Ps. The S&Ps have already, you can see it, it went up to, um, I think it was 75 was a high. Where's that future? Here we are. 77 is a high. Backing off a little bit. It's only a 20-point gap to fill, which I could see happening you know, pretty quickly. Uh, here's a gold. Gold has gotten hit, which makes sense. Risk on. Sell gold. We had one, two days of indecision. Um, we bailed out of this thing at 14.02 um, on the way back down. We had a nice run up from 13.50 area. WTI crude, looking pretty good. Um, this is a break trade here. Let me get rid of this fib. There's a fractal on the daily. Pretty much have three daily highs, you know, 59, 60, 70 area. Looks like a break trade. Um, let me redraw this fib because this is actually a pretty good looking, pretty good looking uh, retracement here. So we're going to use this fractal up here, which is the high. Again, this is a daily down to that low that we saw, which is just north of 50. $50 a barrel, and that brings us to 60, 30, 5, 40, which also happens to match up around these 60, 60 lows. Uh, 
there's a $60 low down there. So I think that this area in here will probably be pretty good, uh, but I would imagine there's going to be some stops here over 59.75. Uh, let's see, we talked about the data coming up, the, the weak Chinese data. Um, just scrolling through week ahead, it's going to be, you know, people are talking about this being a big week for um, maybe, I guess, the economic data. We do have uh, PMIs coming out, manufacturing PMIs coming out all across the globe. So I think, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's plenty of data coming out. Um, we have ISM out of the U.S. We have some ECB speakers, Fed's Clarida. Um, the OPEC meeting, and what do we have in Australia? We have the RBA, which I guess is a pretty big deal. The market's pretty hot, looking for another cut, according to Greg McKenna. But he's not convinced on this one, and I agree. I think maybe it's time for a pause. Um, but that's something to watch out for as far as the central banks go. And um, then we have the services PMI coming out midweek on Wednesday, ADP out of the U.S. And Thursday is going to be kind of, you know, the, the U.S. holiday. We have retail sales coming out of Australia, though, that day. And then Friday. And a lot of people are putting, you know, a ton of emphasis on this NFP number. Um, and Canada's got its jobs number. But... You know, after after seeing a couple weak jobs numbers out of the U.S. and the Fed sounding pretty data dependent, Australian AIG manufacturing PMI um, June coming up. You know, the market's expecting the this to time. to be a bit no, of a mover and, and maybe give us a better idea of what their plans are. Uh, you know, Twenty-five basis points, or even potentially fifty, uh, at the Fed meeting at the end of July. So. Something to keep an eye on. Uh, we'll tweet. Uh, you'll hear from us in the European Open. My colleague is back in the saddle after uh, some meetings and a little baseball over the weekend in London. And uh, if anything, uh, any outsized moves are happening, we'll, uh, we'll keep you up. So good luck in the week ahead, and we will speak to you on the European Open. All the best. Cheers.